Thank you for tuning in to today's TLDR episode of the Breaking Changes podcast. I'm your host and chief evangelist for Postman, Ken Lane. With Breaking Changes, we explore topics from the world of APIs, but looking at it through the lens of business and engineering leadership. Joining me today, we have Lynn Dome, Director at Women in Cybersecurity. Lynn really opened my eyes to the work they are doing to bring diverse voices into the world of cybersecurity and highlighted some of the ways in which enterprise organizations can diversify their cybersecurity teams and have a greater impact across their operations. Let's dive in with the basics. Who are you and, and what do you do? Uh, well, my name is Lynn Dome, and I'm Women in Cybersecurity Executive Director. We often go by our acronym, W-I-C-Y-S, and we pronounce it WESIS, like we, sis, we sisters, because that's exactly what we are. We are a cyber sisterhood. So our mission is to recruit, retain, and advance women in cybersecurity, and we do so by creating opportunities. So we started as a conference way back when in 2014. It's hard to believe that prior to 2014, there wasn't any true inclusion and diversity initiative in the cybersecurity workforce, considering that we've always been in a workforce shortage. But there we were. We launched as a conference. It was a proof of concept, great success. We had a wonderful wait list year after year, and we realized that because of that, we needed to become a, a 501c3 nonprofit to provide year-round benefits. So that's where we're at right now. I uh, good to hear. Um, definitely something that's needed. I I mean, I this may be state you know pushing on the obvious, but I think in this industry we need it. What's what's generally keeping women from from robust careers in cybersecurity? What what are some of the obstacles that that are that are out there? So there, there's so many reasons, you know, the gender balance challenges are, are, you know, not just specifically with cybersecurity, but tech careers in general for women. And the average woman does step out of a tech career at the age of 35 and 50 percent of them after five years of being in um, are looking to leave their professions. So there are some general challenges, what, whether or not they be unconscious bias in the workforce, and, you know, not this inclusive space where trust and happiness and growth opportunities exist. Um, perhaps some uh, microaggressions occur in the workplace. And then also, it's just in general hard for women to be what they cannot see. So it kind of uh, snowballs the impact of women entering into the cybersecurity workforce when they're not other seeing women rising up to leadership positions in the cybersecurity workforce. So whatever the cases may be, women have made progress in the cybersecurity workforce. So back in 2014, there was 11% women in cyber, and now we're at roughly 20 to 24% women in cybersecurity. So progress has been made. But back in 2014, we had 1 million unfilled jobs. And now we have over tripled that. We have 3.5 million projected close to 4.2 million by 2023. So the need and the demand for the workforce exists. And for WESIS, we're a community of women, men, allies, and advocates that have a strong mission and passion to build that cybersecurity workforce. We do so specifically by bringing women and into the workforce, keeping them in the workforce, retaining them, and then providing advancement opportunities so they could rise up. So let's walk through some of the details of, the, of that enablement and support that you provide. So I'm some, are you, are you reaching into university levels, K through 12, or you work or targeting women who might be looking for a career transition? How does someone get get made aware of, of the opportunities in the in the cybersecurity space and get plugged in with WESIS. So now that we're a, 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 a nonprofit, we have a member base of over 5,400 members. We have representation in over 70 countries. We have 43 professional affiliates and professional affiliates are mini WESIS organizations. And they're all throughout Africa, Australia, Canada, France, India, Pakistan, the UK, and throughout the United States. And in addition to that, we have over 150 student chapters, and they're all throughout the world as well. So our mission is to recruit, retain, and advance women in cybersecurity. We do so at that recruitment level of bringing women in to cyber, into their uh, education, into their institutions to learn more and to advance and to be retained on their uh, campuses because of that, but then also into careers as well. So 
Our initiatives and training programs are designed and developed to hit every step of the way because the recruitment's important, but the retention is really absolutely critical there. We don't want women stepping out of their cybersecurity careers. The cybersecurity workforce can afford that. They need the top talent. They need the diversity of thought. In order to solve the problems that have never previously existed before, we need genders, identities, ethnicities, backgrounds, cultures, experience, and so much more, all hands on deck. So that retention piece is really important there. And that's by cultivating the community. And then, of course, providing advancement opportunities so women aren't bored in their careers. They know that there's advancement. They know that there's trust and hope and that there's going to be happiness uh, in the workplace and that they're feeling fulfilled and really thriving in the space where they ultimately want to be. And that's in the in the cybersecurity workforce. So we hit it every step of the way, whether it's in community college, college, uh, we even have some high school chapters, but also early careers, uh, middle management, and then CISOs and leadership roles, executives are a part of the WESIS community too. So when you that, that is really uh, interesting, critical life cycle of uh, that's important with building up the pipeline and keeping the workforce going strong. Yeah, I'm guessing it's pretty critical for for women to see see themselves at all those levels uh, throughout their career, right? See see women in in positions of leadership, in policy making, and and throughout this, and so that they they can picture themselves being in that role at, at a later part of their career, and that helps with that happiness and retention. Yeah, absolutely. Part of the one of the WESIS initiatives is also providing speaking and media opportunities. And that's so that we're collective voice of women in cyber. We could be what others can see. And that's the cybersecurity professionals that we are. So um, and in addition to that, when you're in that leadership and executive role, uh, paying it forward to others, we often say together we thrive. And as one woman rises, she's reaching her hand out and bringing another woman with her. So our mentor mentee program was designed and developed really honing in on those mentors that are ready to pay it forward and, and have that shared experience and provide that shared experience with others so that um, we can make progress. So. As a, as a startup or, or an enterprise organization that is is realizing uh, the the growing need for investment in our cybersecurity efforts and programs, where do we get started in supporting uh, WESIS and 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 helping make our our operations more diverse so that that we have more more voices and more eyes and 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 people on the problem. So the best place to start is just dive right into the WESIS organization. Women, men, allies, and advocates, everyone is welcome. And just like folks are navigating through their cybersecurity careers, everyone is navigating through WESIS membership. And what areas resonate with you and where do you find alignment? Within our member portal, we have special interest groups like neurodiversity and cybersecurity, data privacy, cybersecurity law, Latinas in cybersecurity. So it's all about finding that community and where you resonate and what areas that your needs are and and, uh, and scoping out what those needs are and um, fulfilling them. So sure. how do you how, how can I uh, try to influence leadership when it comes to cybersecurity and investment in this area? And and I find we get a lot of lip service. Yes, it's a priority. Yes, it's a problem. Um, but we're still seeing and this is hypothetical, I'm not saying this is the company I work at, um, is is we still see corners being cut in, in to, to be efficient, to create productivity. And maybe I'm not feeling like security is a is is enough of a priority that it, that it really should be. How do I, how do I convince leadership regarding the urgency? It is a challenge that. A lot of companies have, <laughs> so you're not the only one that's witnessing this in your experience as here and there is definitely just boiling back and peeling back the layers and continuing to work with the leadership on the educational piece of it all and bringing awareness to it and having those crucial conversations effectively communicate what the needs are and where that needs to be started to fill that void and just continue to move forward in that direction. There are, just like many 
areas, there are challenges with cybersecurity and bringing leadership on board to the exact prioritized immediate needs sometimes has significant challenges and significant consequences. But never giving up and always knowing that educating is part of the process of being a cybersecurity leader. How do you, I mean, because it seems like this is a lot, I approach a lot of organizations dealing with legacy code, legacy infrastructure, modernizing things. And and there's a lot of fear of op- decomposing the monolith into a smaller system is going to open up more security holes. There's a lot of concerns around legacy, uh, legacy tech. But I feel like there's also a lot of legacy business and cultural aspects that contribute. So how, how are you equipping um, women specifically to to have an equal voice footing when it comes to uh, joining some of these teams that may may historically not have the 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 legacy gender makeup, the legacy, the the d- diversity that's needed? How are you equip equipping women to to jump into these teams and, and add value? So, well, first of all, employers are coming to us because they want to make a difference Mm -hmm. and they're reaching out, identifying that the, the gender diversity and gender balance on their teams isn't what it should be. And it's not up Mm -hmm. to par. So the first thing is acknowledging to them that kudos, they're paying attention. I I was at uh, an event in, um, Ohio last October, and they did a presentation. And afterwards, I was sitting next to a CISO. He was sitting next to me, and we were just having a general conversation. He said he was proud that he had 35% women on his cybersecurity team. I said, wow, that's great. That's above the industry average. And he said that he's not going to stop until he's at 50%. So I was like, what are you doing that's different? He said, I'm paying attention. And so he's, he's putting, he's not accepting. There are no women for the workforce. That's not an answer to him. He's Mm -hmm. not accepting general recruiting practices. When they say, here are all your applicants, he'll say that's not good enough. And he'll challenge the status quo. So there's so many systemic embedded ways that certain businesses do business. But it takes one champion to really just challenge that and build the team that they want to secure the business and defend the company that they're working for. And, And that takes really championing and taking a very active role in the hiring practices and not accepting no and investing your money in organizations like WESIS, where, you know, I mean, we just had a conference last week in Cleveland, Ohio. We had 1,700 women in cybersecurity. So we challenged that, that question of there are no women in cyber. And we say, here we are, we exist, and we all get together at a technical conference and learn and grow from each other's experiences. So... It's about that. It's about reducing the barriers, bringing up the soft skills on the job racks, not doing the things the old way just because it's the old way and that's the way it's always been done. It's thinking outside of the box, thinking of cybersecurity, building your team as those folks coming into an apprenticeship, thinking about the soft skills that are needed for women and men and for allies and advocates to be in this space, to create an inclusive culture. When you have inclusion, diversity expands. You know, everyone wants to focus on diversity of it's a it's a metric of success. It's very easy to be a part of that, you know, looking at diversity as a metric. But inclusion, inclusion is much harder because it's only felt and it's felt when you're excluded. When you're part of an inclusive space, you don't know when anyone else is feeling excluded because you're included. So it, it really does stem from the leadership down. When the leadership takes an active contributing role of being an advocate, being the voice for women in cyber, being the voice for building a a great team with a powerful diversity of thought, of taking those steps and putting their time and contributions and what it would take for them to build the teams that they want to have. That's what makes the difference. Yeah, that's that's powerful. That's it's it's really about us internalizing, seeing the change we that that we want to see, understanding the value, and and making it making the space, and 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 making the investment not just in the in the technical in the team growth, but in in being present at, at at conferences, being part of the community, and changing changing the culture of of how security is approached. But it's 
it's difficult because when everything's good, you know, everything with security is one of those things you don't really see until things are really bad and have gone gone south. So it is one of those things that we have to start doing in good times and have this conversation and and invest and keep keep pushing for that type of diversity and inclusion across the team so that that when if something does happen, um, it's seen, it's it's and it's it's called out and it's it's brought to our attention and we minimize uh, the the damage that's done is this type of long term investment and planning is hard to do when you're when you're in the moment and you're trying to move really fast. And so is the last conference was in person is coming to the conference. Um, the best way to, to open our team's eyes to virtually um, what's your best recommendations as far as pushing us over over that edge into into change. So thank you, Vince. And it really brings everyone a part of the community, but it's one of many, many different ways. Uh, we are a member based on our membership. And just like navigating through cybersecurity careers, navigating through your membership and where, what areas really resonate with you all and what areas do you really want to focus your attention on? Because there's so many different initiatives, including our mentor mentee program. We designed and developed a curriculum to upskill and uplevel women, no matter where they're at in their careers, preparing them for their next level of advancement. So we have men, women, CISOs, uh, uh, executives, and, and, leaders, C-suite leaders in there that are part of this program, obtaining the resources that we provided in the curriculum, holding these conversations, but now being able to carry themselves forward with a stronger uh, sense about them championing our own community. We provide that opportunity for allyship, for advocacy, for learning. You know, our leadership series is Speak, Listen, Community. And it's all about those that are a part of WESIS in a leadership capacity. We have over 500 leaders that are volunteers within the organization. But what does allyship, what does advocacy, what does inclusiveness, what does that mean to others? And how could we embrace it as a community and all collectively rise up because of it? For me, um, as an as a technology expert, I get into certain silos. I was originally a database administrator, so I'm very much internal databases within the enterprise, and you have all these protections on it and these things that you do within the enterprise to protect that data, that val that that center of value for your, your company. But for me, APIs and then open source, because I run our open source technology program, there's a lot of value in externalizing, being part of a community. Um, and a big part of APIs is, is, is that externalization of our operations where we're letting partners in, we're, we're partnering with folks, we're co-collaborating on content where, so we're being exposed to ideas. So this, what I hear you saying is, is it's not just, oh, that I, it's, I have women and diverse voices on my internal team and we, and this is how we operate internally. This is much wider than just my org. This is a community thing we invest in, we learn, we all grow together, we strengthen together. And then that feeds my team and makes my team stronger. And then ultimately my cybersecurity program better. Oh my gosh, you just you just summed it up beautifully. Let's take that and have that repeat over and over again <laughs> out to others. That is a beautiful because when you create the, the space of inclusion, diversity expands and all benefit from it. So yeah. that was well and, said. Well, uh, I thank you all for your work. And it's something now that, that we, this is on my radar. I'll be getting more involved into in tuned into the newsletter. Um, we'll have this podcast coming out, um, showcasing the great work you all are doing. And then I think when it comes to API security, it's a, it's a regular theme that I'm going to keep bringing up in the show. And I'll keep referring folks your way and see who else we can, uh, you know, and see what other opportunities there are for us to, to partner together. Cause this is pretty, pretty top priority for, for Postman and, and, and just the API space in general. Security is, is APIs are kind of the poster child for potential security vulnerabilities. And I think we need a lot more discussion and a lot more people, uh, uh, paying attention to what's happening. So I thank you for your work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me here to be able to share some information. Uh, I, appreciate I appreciate it. it. 
Thanks again to Lynn for stopping by. You can find more about WICYS at W-I-C-Y-S dot org. And you can find Lynn on LinkedIn. You can subscribe to the Breaking Changes podcast at postman.com slash events slash breaking dash changes. I'm your host, Kim Lane. And until next time, cheers. <laughs>